Twelve-term Texas congressman and three-time presidential candidate Ron Paul is in the middle of a three-day swing through his home state of Texas ahead of next month's Texas primary. Today, he's in Austin. He's joining us to talk about his campaign and what is ahead. You know, let's talk recent news. First of all, Tuesday, we had five primaries. Mitt Romney won them all. all. You picked up delegates in those In Texas, the latest polling, I think, what, public policy poll has Romney 45 percent with Texas Republicans. They've got you at 14 percent. How do you overcome those sort of numbers with with Mitt Romney? A lot of speeches. (laughs) (laughs) Getting young people to vote. (laughs) You know, there is a saying, you know, we have these huge crowds, but a lot of them are independents and a lot of Democrats. So Mm -hmm. if you were running in a general election, it would be very good. But a lot of them don't vote in the Republican primary. And my name uh, does quite as well as Romney does against Obama. You know, we can come in, you know, equal to and sometimes above. So that is a political problem for our campaign, the fact that uh, not all the people who like what I'm doing want to show up in the Republican primary. You know, we were talking about your Facebook page and the passion of your supporters is kind of like, Nobody else's supporters. Um, I was looking at Facebook. Let's bring some of those up. Some of the comments that people were making today that I found, um, you know, Amanda, it's a great day to be a bot, meaning a Ron bot, which is a term for one of your supporters. Um, You know, may God continue to bless Ron, Dr. Paul, his entire family, unite us in the cause of liberty. Um, Shane, vote Ron Paul, you have, or you have no future, plain and simple, (laughs) Ron Paul, exclamation point. And listen to this one from Teresa. Everything he has done in his life, he did right. It brings tears to my eyes to see someone who made all the right choices in life and some and so inspirational that he's able to create a massive movement, yet still getting the raw end of the deal. And finally, when I saw that bot, we had to look up. I looked up Ron Bot in the Urban Dictionary, and, and here's the definition. A rapid supporter of candidate Ron Paul, usually a tad on the loony side. <laughs> These Ron Bots... Explain that. Explain this passion, this fanaticism that you seem to have with your supporters. What well, is it? Well, the term is new for me, so you're telling me something. <laughs> new to me, too. But, but I, know, I, I know about the enthusiasm. I think, they, I think they're desperate to cling on to something, and they really overdo it with the praise. I mean, I think it's super praise. I'm very pleased with it. But I think, it's, I think young people really know what's coming up. I give them a lot of credit for knowing the mess we're in. They're tired of the wars. They know something about personal liberties. Mm-hmm. I talk about that and personal responsibility. They know something about debt, too. So they've learned their arithmetic. And all of a sudden, they feel like they're getting a bad shot. It, you know, they're, they've gone through school. They've borrowed some money. They have a lot of debt. And they don't have any jobs. Right. And, and they don't see an easy way out. And I talk a lot about how a free society operates, what was originally intended by America, how we used to be great. We had the largest middle class ever. And we don't, have, we don't have to stay where we are. We can change it merely by following the rule of law. And most young people respond, yes, they like that. They'd like to have more people following the Constitution, believing that would solve yeah. a lot of our problems. Let's talk politics for a moment here. Um, it would seem at this juncture Mitt Romney seems to be ahead. He seems to be the one who's going to get the nomination. Obviously, it's not a done deal yet. Um, A lot of people are thinking, obviously, the passion of your supporters. Let's say, for example, he does, after the convention, gets the nomination. Would your supporters vote for him? Would you encourage your supporters to vote for him? What do you think would happen? Well, I think if I tried to tell him what to do, it would have not a whole lot of meaning. I would be discredited, and they probably wouldn't respond. Not your style. So, no, and uh, people say, well, tell him. I, I said, well, tell us what we should do. I said, well, do what you think you have to do. So that's part of the philosophy. You're an independent person. You, you do what you want. But, uh, no, they're not likely to respond. Uh, but um, I, I haven't thought that far along yet on what to do or what to yeah, say get, get, because we, we have ahead. a month or two left here and we're maximizing our effort to get as many delegates. And, and, you know, we're starting to pick up delegates here and now, here and there, you know, which weren't expected. Like we may even end right. up being a winner in Iowa, which would be a rather ironic. Yeah, that, that's kind of out there. Nothing confirmed yeah. yet, there, right. but that's, that, that's sort of out there. Texas is proportional delegates to being right. getting so delegates be, there. Big delegates there too, and we got some in New York the other day. And, you get a few delegates. And, and, and uh, what are you, do- you going to do with the convention if you have a, a, an amount of delegates, which you do? Well, if Governor Romney has the vote, you don't have a whole lot to do with it. Now, if you win like five states, 
uh, there are certain rules that provide you more uh, presence at the convention, like speeches and nominations and things like that. So we just don't know how that'll work out. If, if you were able to put things into the Republican platform at the convention, what things would it be? I mean, if you just had to put in one thing, what would it be? Well, I, I, <laughs> it's hard to pin it down to one because I talk about a whole philosophy. Change foreign policy, change the monetary policy, right. balance the budget. You know, we can't, we can't solve our economic problems without having sound money. We shouldn't be spending this much money, so we should quit. We shouldn't be overseas fighting wars we can't win, and that would work into balancing the budget. If there is one thing, if you could do it, make them live up to their oath of office, because mm -hmm. I believe we wouldn't have gotten in this mess if we wouldn't have had so many who just sort of ignore the Constitution, and they don't even know what Article 1, Section 8 means, and that tells you what you're allowed to do, and if it's not there, you're not supposed right. to do it. The Constitution. You know, what else resonates with the young people? You were, at, you were at UTEP yesterday, you were at UT tonight, at LBJ Library, a little bit opposed as far as philosophies <laughs> go there. What else hits with you and the students? Why do they respond such? Um, I talk to a lot of them. I ask that question, and a lot of them will be very flattering and say, you're the only ones telling the truth. You know, and, and I said, well, yeah, the others are saying it, and then mm -hmm. they say they said, but we don't, we don't believe them. They, they know what politicians are like. Right. You know, they say a thing, and they've seen so many. Some of my supporters from four years ago supported Obama, and they're disenchanted now because he was going to be uh, different on civil liberties. He was going to be less aggressive overseas, and, you know, he expanded and the wars. Under, so they, de under debate right yeah, now. But, okay. but Republicans feel the same way. You know, when Republicans got in charge, we doubled the size of the Department of Education, expanded uh, uh, the medical care system. And so Ron Paul is all about small government. That's for sure. Okay. Small government. Listen, thank you very much for stopping you're, by. You're welcome. Congressman, thank we you. appreciate it.